Y'all, we are in such a drought for 2K22 information. And I know that 2K is doing this on purpose because what they're doing is trying to wait until right before the game comes out to release information so that way it's rapid fire news. The way they're doing it, they could at least give us player ratings with screenshots because today on 2K Twitter, they decided to release 2K screenshots. And with these screenshots, all we're getting is just that. Screenshots, who cares, right? So let me show y'all what I'm talking about right now. So today on 2K Twitter, they released the first official screenshot of Stephen Curry, and here it is. 2K, I don't know what in the world they think we're gonna do with this information. We don't, like, what are we gonna do with this screenshot? Look at it? <laughs> Cause to be honest with y'all, this screenshot looks no different than Stephen Curry on 2K21 next gen. This is 22 next gen, by the way. It says first look 2K22. This is not 21 next gen. But the Stephen Curry face looks the exact same. So what are we supposed to do with this? I mean, we see the jersey different with the whole Nike symbol or whatever. And the body types seem a little bit different from what I can see from this. But other than that, what's new? Like, this is not telling us. The least they could have done is giving us a player rating. You know what I'm saying? That's the least they could have done. Now we on JJ Creates right here, you know what I'm saying? Shout out JJ Creates. But um, the only difference I can see from the screenshot right here comparing 21 and 22 is number one, the lighting is different. And number two, the traps. Because the players' traps seem to fit better with the jerseys and all that stuff. Because, you know, the jerseys fit different. But yeah, nobody cares about this, man. Like, 2K, what are y'all doing, bro? Like... We is now on 2K's official site, and as you can see, they finally released a lot of information about 2K player ratings. Still not the biggest news, still not something I care about that much, but it's better than what we had yesterday, you know what I'm saying, which is basically nothing. So first, we're gonna look at player ratings, then we're gonna look at the top rated players among each category, and then at the end, I'm gonna get my take. So that's what we're doing in this video today. And before the video continues, I'm gonna say right now, hit the subscribe button, leave a like down below because it's free. Don't be lazy, y'all, leave a like, man. Just help me out, you know what I'm saying, leave a like. But with that being said, y'all, let's get into it. All right, now first and foremost for these player ratings, y'all, we got the man himself, Kevin Durant. Now this rating right here is accurate to me at 96 because of the fact that had he not stepped his foot in that line and, you know what I'm saying, in that Milwaukee game, he'd be a 97 probably because he would have went further in the playoffs. But because he stepped his foot in the line, he's a 96 where he belongs. You know what I'm saying? That extra point would have went to his offensive awareness. <laughs> Let me stop. But Kevin Durant's at a 96, well-deserved. I ain't really got much to say on this. We're just going to go to the next one, you know what I'm saying? Next up is Stephen Curry and again. I agree, 96 is where he should be at because he hasn't really done anything different. I mean, has he done something different this year that he didn't do last year at 96? I don't know. I believe he was 96 last year as well, but I don't think he done anything, you know, much better than... I think he did play better, matter of fact, but not by much. So, in my honest opinion, again, 96 is deserving of him. And also, since we're looking at this little picture right here, I don't like the fact that they gave him the same player face. This, the exact same player... Well, the player face ain't the problem, really. It's really his hair I have a problem with, you know what I'm saying? His hair is not even like this no more. You know, Stephen Curry wears a close cut like he used to wear back in, like, you know, 2010, 2011. Like, 2J, stop being lazy and fix this man's hair. That's not a big problem, but it's something that can easily be fixed, you know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of nitpicking at this point. I like the nitpick. I like the details and all that stuff. But anyway, Stephen Curry's at a 96, well-deserved. His rating's where it should be. They just need to fix his hair. Anyway, moving on down... We got the championship Milwaukee Bucks. And as you can see, Giannis at a 96, well-deserved. Chris Middleton, 88, well-deserved. And Drew Holiday at 85, which is also where he should be. This is a very accurate ratings in my opinion because Chris Middleton, like last year, I would have given him an 84. But this year, he showed me that he can actually create his own shot. Like, that's something that, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks was missing was a shot creator because they did not have that. Nobody could create their shot off the dribble besides Chris Middleton, as we saw, you know, in the past finals. So because of that, Chris Middleton deserves an 88. He's been playing better and better every season, and I think he's going to continue to get, well, I don't know if he's going to continue to get that much better. I think he has a ceiling at like 89, probably, honestly, you know what I'm saying, if I'm being honest. So, Drew Holiday is Drew Holiday. We knew what he was going to do in the playoffs and finals and all that stuff. He, you know, stepped up into this thing. By the way, y'all, I'm going to give surface level takes because I'm not an NBA YouTuber. I don't feel like getting into it too much, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to give surface level takes, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, take it or leave it. But, yeah, but yeah, these ratings right here is accurate in my opinion. I have no problem with this at all. All right, now next on the list, we got the Joker himself, Nikola Jokic at 95 overall. Now, to be honest with y'all, when I first saw this rating, I thought it was a little bit too high. But then I did realize that he did average like 33 points per game and like 10 rebounds per game in the 2021 Western Conference Finals, you know what I'm saying, against the Portland Trailblazers. So it is deserving. So because of that, I would say he does deserve a 95, you know what I'm saying? He just slept on because his game, his game ain't that flashy. So that's why he slept on so much, I feel like. But anyway, that's it for Nikola Jokic. Let's go to the next person, which is who we got next. And up next is Dame Lillard. I don't even got to realize this stat line. I know the 2K is holding this man. 
Why hit 94? Last year he was a 95 and he played better this postseason than he did last postseason, if I can remember. You know what I'm saying? Like, matter of fact, forget whether or not he played better in this postseason or last year's postseason. Just look back at that game against Denver when he did everything by himself. He had like, what, 55 points that game and he did a step, he did this one step back move where he like dribbled and did like a, I don't know what it was called, but it was like some crazy step back that he did and he spun around with it and shot a three. This man was by himself. He had nobody on his team, man. TJ McCullum went out of bounds by accident against Denver in that game. Like, bro, Dame Lillard was carrying his whole team on his back. He should be a 96 in my opinion. That's just me though. Cause this man, yo, like Dame has been slept on for every 2K in terms of his rating besides last year. Last year is the only time they gave him what he actually deserved, you know what I'm saying? But this year, he should be 96 in my opinion, 95 or 96 because, like I said, this man been killing, and I've been watching Dame because he's my second favorite player behind Kyrie, so I'm a little bit biased because of that, but Dame deserves a 95 or a 96 in my opinion because this man needs some help in Portland. He just lost Melo. All he has now is CJ McCollum who cracked under pressure last year. You know what I'm saying? Who else he got? Nurkic. He needs some help in Portland, man, like for real. And I'm not even being biased by saying that because again, he's like my favorite player, my second favorite player behind Kyrie. So I don't know, man. I just feel like this man needs some help. And he's being held again with his rating. And next up, we got LaMelo Ball, rookie of the year, 84 overall. This is very accurate. So far, he's looking like a young Penny Hardaway. So I think this is very accurate. Some people say Magic Johnson, but I think it's too much because, you know what I'm saying, it's too early to call him Magic. I say he's more like Penny right now, you know what I'm saying? His understanding of the game at his age is already incredible. His court vision is incredible, and his basketball IQ is incredible, which is basically the same thing I said for the first thing. But um, this man deserves an 84. You see his player screenshot looks more accurate than it did last year. So last year, I don't know what he looked like. Last year, like he stunk. I don't know what he looked like last year, bro. That screenshot from last year from Lamella Ball was just, I don't know what that was. I don't think it was an actual scan because, again, that whole pandemic thing that went on, so they couldn't scan all the players. But now you can see he has an actual face scan. Looks exactly like him. So that's it for Lamella Ball. Then we got Jason Tatum at a 90, and there's actually a video about it. So we're gonna watch that a little bit later on in the video because it was kind of funny to me, but um, Jason Tatum is at a 90. I think he deserves that. From what I can remember, Jason Tatum played 90 worthy this past playoffs. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna look at it real quick, you know, to make sure I'm right. Let's see what Jason Tatum did, hold on. Okay, it says Jason Tatum averaged 30.6 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game, and 4.6 assists per game in five games in the 2021 playoffs. Okay. Do y'all think that's his, let, let me know in the conversation down below. Do y'all think this is an accurate rating for Jason Tatum or not? I think he could have been a 91 in my opinion. That's my opinion though. You know what I'm saying? I think he could be 91. Let me know what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? So that's it for Jason Tatum. Next is Zion at 89. I ain't got nothing to say about this. Well deserved. Trey Young is at 89. He should be a 91. He should be, what was he last year? 91 or 90? What, what was Trey Young last year? This man took the Hawks to the playoffs for the first time since like, what, 2015? This man should be a 91 or higher, a 91 or maybe even a 92. This man been going crazy. What, can, what is his weakness besides defense? You know what I'm saying? Like this man been going crazy in the playoffs, bro. And I know he averaged less points per game than Jason Tatum, but he went further in the playoffs than Jason Tatum. You know what I'm saying? Jason Tatum didn't play as many games. So had Jason Tatum played more games then he would have averaged less points than Trey Young. On top of that, the offensive game plan is completely different. So stats onto the whole story. You know what I'm saying? I'm just showing stats for all the nerds out there. It's gonna be like, well, actually he deserves an 89 because he only had 28.8 points per game versus Jason Tatum who had like 30 points per game. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I have the stats up. In my opinion, I'm more of an eye test type of guy. I'm gonna go mainly off the eye test, but like I said, the stats is for the nerds. Um, but yeah, I always say this in my videos, stats don't tell the whole story, man. Stats don't never tell the whole story, whether it's in NBA 2K or real life. They don't tell the whole story. That's just my hot take or my take, whatever you want to call it. But Trey Young should be a 91 overall. This man was fearless in the playoffs. They call him Ice Trey for a reason. We saw what he did in the playoffs. This man is fearless. He has ice cold veins. Like, come on, man. He stepped up in the big moments when it mattered. This man was going crazy. You know what I'm saying? He put Atlanta back in the playoffs after like, like, come on, dude. Trey Young should be a 91. Candace Parker is a 93. I don't know if this is deserving or not. I wouldn't know. I ain't even trying to be funny. I just, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't know. The man Zach Levine right now is at 87 which I think he should be at 88, which, you know, that goes either way with me because I think after this season, he might be a little bit higher because now he got a little bit of help with DeMar DeRozan and Lonzo Ball. So I think he should be at 89 at the end of the season. And last but not least, we got DeMontis Sabonis. And y'all, this is a great screenshot for DeMontis Sabonis. We see he's at an 86 overall, and this looks so accurate right here, man. Like, also, I'm gonna say right now, besides the lighting, the only difference I can see is the actual players' bodies because the bodies does look more wide this year, Pauls, and they look more realistic. Like, the shoulders look more broad this year, and the traps look more realistic as well because last year, the traps was more rounded and more cartoony looking, and the bodies is more wider, and the shoulders is more broad now, and the traps is more lower to the body the way it should be, so it looks a little bit more realistic. But the Montes Sabonis face scan is accurate. 86 seems accurate. I don't really know too much about him, but um, that seems accurate, you know, so I ain't gonna look at the stats in that because I don't really care. But anyway, that's it for all the base player ratings. So now let's get this right here, which is actually the top rated 
2K overalls, and as you can see, we have LeBron James at 96. And 2K seems to be doing this as a lifetime achievement award, you know what I'm saying? Because 2K loves doing lifetime achievement awards with these 2K player ratings. That's why you can't take 2K player ratings seriously, and that's why I don't take them seriously. I take them with a grain of salt, to be honest with y'all, because 2K loves giving lifetime achievement awards. 2K do not know what they're doing. We've seen that with, you know, the actual game itself. So why would y'all trust their ratings, you know what I'm saying, in all honesty? Um, I know I'm talking about these ratings, but in all honesty, I'm taking them with a grain of salt because it is 2K. Like, they don't, 2K is stupid. They've been proven to be stupid plenty of times, you know what I'm saying? But 2K, yo, they're just a bunch of guys that just give ratings out. I don't know. But in my honest opinion, LeBron is not a 96 overall. He's not the best player in the league as of right now or as of what he did last season. I mean, I take into account that he probably was injured. But even still, he's not the best player as of right now. He's not at 100% probably. I don't know whether he's at 100% or not. I still don't think he's the best player right now, you know what I'm saying? I think it's Kevin Durant still. I don't know who's behind Kevin Durant, but I don't think it's LeBron. But after LeBron, I don't disagree with this list that much. They got Stephen Curry at 96. I agree with that. I think he is a little bit better than Kawhi. Nikola Jokic is better than Joel Embiid, which I guess this is going off the stats of what the players did in the 2021 playoffs because if we're going off just who's a better player in general, this list is all wrong. You know what I'm saying? This is all wrong. They got Dan Lillard last. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I'm going to say this. I don't care if James Harden did more than Dan Lillard in the actual playoffs, which I doubt he did because I don't know because I ain't going to look it up because I don't feel like it. But James Harden should not be rated higher than Dame Lillard, bro. I don't care. Because, like, in the playoffs, he did not do more than Dame. Dame carried the whole team by himself, and James Harden didn't. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, like, James Harden just not... Well, he's probably a better player than Dame in general, but, like, not by much. You know what I'm saying? So, in that sense, I agree with this. But at the same time, I disagree because... I don't know, man. Like, it's, I'm a, like, I'm confused on this right here. Because it's like, what are they going off of? The stats from the playoffs or overall, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are they going off of here? I don't know, man. But either way... I don't like some of the stuff on this list, but we ain't gonna get too much into it because it's gonna create a whole big thing, you know what I'm saying? I don't really care that much about it because like I said, it's 2K. Can't get too wrapped up in it, right? Now, this is the only list I actually trust and believe right here, which is the top rated shooters because this is accurate. We got Steph Curry at number one, Clay Thompson number two, Joe Harrison number three, his brother Seth at number four. That's crazy. You got both Curry brothers in the same list. That's, that's kind of crazy right there. I ain't gonna lie. And then Duncan Robertson at number five. This is the only list I'm gonna actually take seriously right here because 2K does not know what they're talking about <laughs> with this list. Well, where's that? This list right here. They don't know what they're talking about with this. You know what I'm saying? Unless they're going off a of playoff stats, they don't know what they're talking about. The top rated dunkers, again, 2K is drunk. They got Zion rated over Zach Levine. And the only reason why they have Zion rated over Zach Levine is because he's Zion. You know what I'm saying? Zion is not a better dunker than Zach Levine. I've seen Zach Levine dunk between the legs from the free throw line. Zion could never do that. You know what I'm saying? Zion could jump high. His vertical's crazy. I know it is, but like, he's not dunking like Zach Levine. We're not talking about who's the highest jumper. We're talking about who's the best dunker. I think Zion probably jumps a little bit higher than Zach, but Zach's a better dunker. I don't know, whatever. Aaron Gordon, accurate. This is also accurate. And this is also accurate. You know what I'm saying? No problem with that down there. But these two right here is just, come on, man. Top WNBA players, I wouldn't know. This is all the lists from what they have. So um, that's cool or whatever. The top German players, Dennis Schroeder, Daniel Tice, Kleber, et cetera, et cetera. That's cool. Top French players, of course, Rudy Gobert, and then Evan, Fo Evan Fournier is over Nicholas Batum. I ain't, whatever. Anyway, top Spanish players, Serge Ibaka, Ricky Rubio, Marcus Saul, et cetera, et cetera. Mr. Jason Tatum, one of my favorites in the league. Uh, talk to me about last year. Where do you think the ratings should be at the beginning of this year, and where do you think it's going to end up at the end of the I got to a 91. I think it was a 91. I think you got to set the base at 92. Uh, you're on 90. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's it for all the player ratings and all that stuff. In the comment section down below, y'all can let me know if y'all agree with these player ratings or if y'all disagree, which players you think is wrong with their ratings and all that good stuff. So let me know in the comments. But with that being said, you guys, I appreciate y'all for watching. Stay tuned for my videos in the future. More videos coming up soon. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed because leaving a like is free. Why not? And also turn on your post notifications because that's how you know I post videos in the future. But with that being said, you guys, for real this time, it's been your boy with Andre, and I'm catch y'all on the next one. And until next time, y'all, I'm out. Peace.